All right, what's up guys? So I'm currently in LA. I'm in my hotel room doing auditions and stuff like that. I just quickly wanted to come on here because I realize there's one story that I've never ever told you guys, which is how I became my university's commencement speaker. All right, like Nia's behind the camera. <laughs> Making faces! Wanna say hi? Just, just say it. Hey. Hey. <laughs> I realize that I've never actually told you guys a story about how I became my university's commencement speaker after dropping out of college. Now, this is a little bit of a clickbait because I didn't officially drop out, but I was told that I couldn't come back into college. And I just think it's a great story just because I don't know, like, it just shows that you should never give up and just keep on going. So, freshman year of college, I ran for student council president. I lost. I think the leading person who won had, like, 5,000 votes, and I only had 130. And it was one of the worst moments of my life, to be honest, because I campaigned so hard. I was the youngest person to ever run for student council president. I was just cyberbullied a lot. There was just a lot going on behind the scenes on Twitter and stuff like that. I remember one day I went to Subway. They had, like, this live comment system or whatever. It was basically, like, live tweeting online. It was supposed to be just solely about the election and somebody was like Taiwan's at Subway let's go get them and it was just like stuff like that that like left my anxiety really high during that time that was also the year that like I kind of met Justin Timberlake I'll leave that Huffington Post story down below because that one's pretty cool so it wasn't just all bad but it was a pretty bad time so what happened was I developed swollen lift nodes in my throat I didn't know that I had that until like the next year during my sophomore year of college and I basically almost failed out of every class like it was crazy I was told by the university that I couldn't come back to school and that my scholarship wasn't going to be validated for the next year. Just not a great time, you know, like all of like this negative things that was happening to me. I really felt like nothing was coming together. I was semi-finalist on Shark Tank, as you guys know, never made an offer for that or, you know, my app never went further than that. I don't know. It was just a lot of losses after losses after losses. And I just felt like I wasn't winning. I wasn't winning at school. I wasn't winning in the business world because I had my own app and I wasn't winning with anything else, even with the election. So the next year, my junior year, they were like, well, the only way that you can come back into school is if you had a medical issue. And I really never thought about it that maybe the swollen lymph nodes was part of the medical issue. So I reached out to the doctor who treated me for the swollen lymph nodes at the time and caused me to be super anxious and high anxiety and all of that stuff just because of that. And so she wrote me a letter and it basically got me back into school because I had that. And then the next year I was like top 15, top 10 of my class during the junior year. And also I was able to go to NYU for that summer to study drama. I studied calculus there. That also added to my academic records and stuff like that and that was also the summer where I did NBC Shades of Blue with Jennifer Lopez which I told the story on this channel about that and Daredevil and, and just all these incredible shows and it honestly just shows you that you should never ever give up on your dreams or anything it's never the end until it's the end as I always tell my cousin Remy everything will be okay in the end and if it's not okay then it's not the end and you can always just keep on going and keep on thriving just Never give up and never give in. But the greatest part of the story is that during my senior year of college, I was able to audition to be my university's commencement speaker and then my school of business commencement speaker. Made it to the top five for my university commencement speaker, which was amazing. And some other girl had won. I don't really want to talk about that, but Nia was there when. <laughs> Let's just say my speech was a little better. I love her to death. Like, we're still Facebook friends. She was a little bit older because she was a grad student, so it was, like, it was fine. But it's whatever, you know. Life's good. Everything's good. I got to speak in front of 5,000 people. And the fact that I went from dropping out of college, basically, to being my commencement speaker and them saying the nicest words about me, like, literally the nicest things that happened, all came because I never, ever gave up my dreams. And I just kept on going. If you're in a situation right now where you feel like there's no tomorrow or, like, things can't get better, just know that time honestly heals everything and if you stay ambitious and stay the path and make sure that you never give up on basically anything that you dream of in your heart or that you want to do it'll happen it really will i said this in my kobe video as well fairy tale doesn't end until you end it till life is over and that's why every single day you should wake up and be inspired to live your life and just try to be the best person that you can be. And honestly, that graduation speech led to a lot more incredible things, including getting my agent and stuff like that. I cannot with Nia dancing. You know, just like with acting, I didn't know somebody who knew somebody who knew somebody who knew somebody who was an actor. I didn't know somebody who knew somebody who knew somebody who was a graduation speaker. And I'm super proud of that. And I just wanted to tell you guys that story on this channel. But I do have to also mark this day because it was so incredible. This morning, I got a DM from a subscriber. Shout out to Giuseppe. Like, you're amazing. I think he lives in Portugal or Brazil. I'm not really sure. He's a college student there. And guys, he sent me an Instagram direct message and basically told me that he was studying me in school. So I guess like I'm featured in some vocabulary book in Brazil, which is so crazy. I'm going to pull it up right now for you guys. Just to like 
read it. I don't know if it will show on camera. So this is what it looks like. Dreaming the impossible. Taiwan Wade is 21 years old and has had a passion for technology. Taiwan is not a millionaire like Zuckerberg because I was like so obsessed with him during that time. But he is an example that dreams can come true if you have passion and hard work. Which is so true. And so to that book company who like wrote about me, like I had no idea this was out there. Thank you so much. But it's just proof in Teflon that if you never give up on your dreams, wildest things like being in a textbook can happen. Anyways, I thought I would also include my speech in this video just because I've never had my commencement speech video on this channel. So I'm gonna play that for you guys right now, but I hope that you guys have a wonderful evening. Thank you guys for always supporting me in my acting journey. It truly means the world to me when I'm out here in LA auditioning, thinking about giving up. It's you guys who keep me going. So I love you so much. But life is good. Life is great because I never gave up. Yeah, and you shouldn't give up either. Continue to follow your dreams, stay happy and blessed and all those wonderful things. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. You wanna say bye? Bye. Bye. Okay, bye guys. And now, our feature presentation. Now you may not remember this, but when we first hit the harvested huge streets of George Washington University, the world had our freshman class doomed from the start. Yes, families and faculty, scientists, movie producers, and media outlets from around the globe had our class condemned as the very last year at GW. But we survived that 2012 Mayan apocalypse, ultimately proving that the class of 2016 was destined to defy the laws of physics and achieve greatness within our lifetime. Now, when I was asked to speak here today, I, I thought a lot about the last two decades, and ultimately I was just filled with nostalgia. For example, when we were younger, Sorry was just the name of a popular board game. And now it's Bieber's hit uh, breakup anthem that I listen to every night in my dorm room whenever a girl won't text me back. Um, <laughs> but times are a-changing. We went from Toy Story to Frozen, from Harry Potter to The Hunger Games, from Blockbuster and Naptime to Netflix and, well, you guys know the rest. <laughs> Even here on this campus, we started off in FYDP, our first year developmental course, sitting at a conference room style table to only become the inaugural class of the charitable Lemonade Day. And now, as official graduates of the School of Business, I've realized what a dream come true these past four years have been. From my friends meeting Anderson Cooper on the National Mall, to me high-fiving Justin Timberlake at a surprise taping of Late Night with Jimmy Fallon, from others chatting with John McCain and President Bill Clinton in a Starbucks on inauguration weekend, to almost everybody here attending said inauguration. This, GW's campus, is the crossroads of the American dream. It's the kind of storybook environment where you're able to see the dreams that are possible for yourself in this lifetime. Now sure, there were a lot of late nights in Gelman Library and terrible group project partners, see a couple of you in the audience today. I'm glad you made it here. Congratulations. Congratulations. But what the School of Business ultimately did was produce an overachieving group of type A perfectionists. And I mean this in the best way possible. This is the school where my friends Manasi Daria, Tyrell Charles, and Maya Nasheed secured more internships than anyone I've ever known. This is the school where my friend Laura Frost curated and was in the process of patenting an innovative nose warmer for the Pitch George competition. <laughs> this is the school where my friend Alex Zimmerman led the lacrosse team to victory after serving a year in combat. What I'm trying to say is that you guys, is that you guys inspire me. We are the history makers, the millennial generation a group of ambitious do-gooders, and we must never forget these moments in the next chapters of our lives. It may be hard to do. I mean, let's face it, we've practically been living in a high-end coffee commercial for the past four years. Even our dorms and campus cafes are reminiscent of the set of a Nancy Myers rom-com. But what I'm trying to get at is that the past four years have simply felt like a dream. But please promise me this one thing. Don't be afraid of the future. Embrace it. Just because the past exists doesn't mean it defines us exclusively. We can carry those past historic achievements into our new pursuits. And sure, we will fail 
along the way. And if you guys don't know, I did freshman year big time. I was the youngest person to run for the school's most coveted position, student association president. Ultimately meaning that I was the youngest person to ever lose the school's most coveted position, student association president. And after that, I lost a lot of friends. I was ostracized. I was cyberbullied to the point where I stayed in my dorm room for two years, which led me to the thought of why do we support the dreams and aspirations of our favorite celebrities, but not the same of our peers or friends? I think if we did, the world would be a much better place. Thank you. But let me get back to this president story because it revolutionized my life. So what it did was it ultimately left me fr crying frequently, feeling depressed. I was embarrassed. I was feeling disenfranchised. I felt screwed over by life. So for anyone who lived in Thurston freshman year, this part of the speech is for you. <laughs> but what I did was I slowly retaught myself the idea that ambition isn't a bad thing. So I decided to take back the narrative of my life. I became a semi-finalist on Shark Tank, as he said, after teaching myself computer programming in three days and creating an iPhone application. From that, Ariana Huffington called me and asked if I would write for the Huffington Post. From that, I received a phone call this semester to audition to play President Barack Obama in a biopic on the college years of his life. Don't clap so soon, I didn't get the part. I didn't get the part, I didn't get the part. <laughs> but you see, what I'm trying to say is that failure does not exist. It doesn't. It's only there to push us in the right direction, ultimately becoming a stepping stone to even greater success. But what I learned was a little something from that voice called failure, and it's to relax. 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 It's really going to be okay. And forget about all the naysayers, because no matter what you believe in, God, kismet, the universe, God had a dream for us before anybody had an opinion about it, and nothing can change that. But I learned that you have to trust what will be will be. Your instincts and dreams are valid. Believe in them, pursue them, and as Ferris Bueller perfectly surmised, Enjoy the journey while doing so. So this is it. This is it, guys. This is it. No. No more five-minute runs to the White House, unless somebody here has a six-figure job that they're not telling me about. No more, no more Whole Foods. No more, no more Pinkberry. No more of that. No more sign. No more sign. <laughs> I've never been, but no more sign. <laughs> And you may think that the close of this collegiate experience is the very end of our own biographical presentations, but I'm here to tell you that it doesn't stop here. This was only a scene in a much grander production. And no matter the script that you write for the future, know that there are no accidents, no coincidences, and no wrong turns. I, I really don't know everything. I really don't. But I do know this. With ambition, we are all on the same path. And every single thing happens for a reason, with a purpose, in time. Just make sure your production is worthwhile and your story is worth telling. On the first day here at GW, an international business professor quoted to Pre President Washington saying, I hope you shall possess the firmness and virtue to maintain what I consider the most enviable of titles, the character of an ambitious man. For in this man, happiness is imminent. Well, Mr. Washington, in all four years at your namesake, we have never been happier than in this moment in time. We now know, with diploma in hand, that we can change the narrative of our life, change our scene. It's never too late, for I've learned here that with the tiniest bit of ambition, absolutely anything is possible. And I just want to end with this to anybody out there who's an underdog, to anybody who's a wildish dreamer like me, to anybody who's ever been cyberbullied, to anyone who has haters, doubters, 
non-believers or anonymous commenters in your life because of the positive things that you're trying to do with it, I want you to tell them one thing. Get used to it. Because someday you'll be standing on your own stage in an arena full of 3,000 people and they'll have no choice but to listen to you. Just continue to take risk and never, ever give up on your dreams. I know I won't. Congratulations, class of 2016. We did it. Woo! Thank you very much, Taiwan. That, that was excellent. Um, I might have missed a few of the cultural references. Um, but I think the faculty uh, would all agree that you're, you're an excellent representative, representative of this amazing class. That was, that was terrific. Thank you again.